Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. So, I thought I'd talk about Nigel Farage's Brexit party today after he annoyed me several times in the past few days. Most recently, I noted that he has refused to accept an offer of a televised debate with the leader of Change UK. Now, to me, the Brexit party is more than just a threat to the UK on the isolated issue of our relationship with the EU. It's a much more sinister indication of the way our society is tearing itself apart for the gain of nothing more than wealthy elites. This was a party that was set up immediately, set up overnight. Now contrast that with Change UK, which is genuinely setting up from a base of no infrastructure, and you can see just how difficult it is to set up a national political party. But this Brexit party isn't really a political party. It has no members. It hides the sources of its funding, though one was accidentally revealed quite recently. It has no manifesto. It has no offices that members of the public can go to. Uh, for all those that support this party, I would say, why are you supporting a party that has no aims? A political party that has no aims, no manifesto, is advocating nothing more than an anarchy. And if you really think that leaving the EU is an aim, then explain what that means. What would the UK do outside of the EU? Because Farage has never said so, nor has any Brexiteer. He didn't say as a member of UKIP, and he isn't saying as what appears to be the sole member of the Brexit party. How, for example, would we gather security information without cooperating with our neighbours? Nigel Farage said that we shouldn't share information on criminals and those suspected of committing violent crimes. So he thinks that violent criminals should be able to enter our country because without information sharing, we'd have no idea who has a criminal record and for what when they come into the country uh, or even suspicions of those coming across the border. A great deal was made of leaving the EU magically improving our NHS, for which there is a court case going on. So how does the Brexit party want to improve the NHS? Farage has said that he wants it abolished and replaced with exclusively private healthcare. He said that the idea of the NHS is stupid. This, of course, being a guy that's sponsored by far-right Americans. He's also been saying more recently that we should relax our gun laws as well. He literally wants to bring the extreme wing of the Republican Party to Britain. A Brexit party candidate was recently interviewed and they said that the EU would help, you know, leaving the EU would help Britain tackle child poverty and education issues. The interviewer, in a rare case for someone from the BBC, challenged this by asking what aspect of EU law or regulations or administration prevents the UK government from doing that right now? How did they respond? They're still thinking about it. They had no answer at all. All they could say was, oh, EU laws are bad but they couldn't name any EU laws that were bad or hampering us in any way, let alone the way that they were claiming. It reminds me of my favourite thing to do sometimes with Leaf supporters, the ones who say that the EU laws are the problem, because there's various issues around it. And I ask them to name a single EU law that they don't approve of. And it turns out that they can't name any EU laws at all. Now Farage tries to be, he, he tries to pretend he's a man of the people and constantly rails against what he calls the political elite. And it has echoes for me of the Trump campaign, which should come as no surprise because it's the same people involved in both. Where Donald Trump talked about draining the swamp and clearing out the US political elite that did nothing good for the American people. And that resonated with a lot of people in the US as it resonates with people in the UK. And it's because it is based on a foundation of truth. The political elite in both countries have made people downtrodden citizens of a machine intended simply to make a small number of very wealthy people wealthier at the expense of everyone else. But the problem was that Trump was not the person who ever wanted to remove that system. He's one of those wealthy people that has benefited from the system and who intends to benefit much more as president. Farage is also working directly from that for that elite. He's not against them, he's their puppet. They're actually, these people are worse than the political elite who have actually frustrated us. Look at the candidates being fielded for the party. They are wealthy and they are the political elite. And Farage doesn't even try to hide this fact. He proudly presents them at rallies. And look what this man of the people did at the weekend. In a chauffeur-driven car, you know, as you do when you're an ordinary chap, get driven around by a chauffeur, that crashed into another car. An infant child in the other car was audibly screaming... And Farage calmly got out of the car. Did he go and check, see if he needed to call an ambulance, anything like that, see if he could help? No, no. Calmly got out, walked to the boot of the car, took out his bag, 
and legged it from the scene as fast as he could. This is the champion of the people, behave. Farage is also trying to present the Brexit party as like UKIP, but without the racism. Yet the party's main campaign manager is on record as saying that Tommy Robinson has been persecuted and that there's no such thing as Islamophobia. It's all made up. But Farage was the leader of UKIP and a successful campaigner for them. The racism came from his directions. He deliberately tried to demonise Muslims as part of his campaign. All populist movements, you know, such as his, work on a simple principle. Present the people with an enemy and say that only you will protect them from that enemy. Hitler did it, Trump did it, Farage is doing it. But people are social animals. We don't have whole groups of people as our enemies. Our enemies are the populist leaders who urge us to fight amongst ourselves for nothing more than the profit of these despots. A recent example of his racism was when he tried to say, in Oldham, there's a, there's a street where one side is occupied entirely by white families, the other side entirely by black families, and neither side talks to each other. He later said what he meant was Asian people, so he doesn't even remember which ethnic minority he's trying to attack. But the point is, there is no such street anywhere in the country. It's a complete myth. Wherever you do get streets with different ethnicities, you actually get less racism because they get to know each other. There's no situation where people don't talk like that. You know, they get to know each other and find out that people are just people. People like Farage keep talking about certain groups not integrating. But his lies rely upon white people not integrating. The colour of your skin or where your ancestors came from doesn't determine your personality or whether you're a good or a bad person. This is obvious to anyone who does integrate with a multicultural or multiracial community. That's just what his kind want people to think, and it only works on white people who don't themselves integrate with society. There's a reason why this rhetoric only works on people who don't integrate with their communities. When you get to know people from different walks of life, you see that they're just like yourself. People are people. You know, but that's no good for monsters like Farage, whose only interest in Brexit is ensuring that he doesn't want us to leave. Good God, he'd lose his salary then. But he needs to keep saying that we should. He just wants his MEP salary to continue. That's all. He's not like his white supremacist overlord Steve Bannon, who is an even more dangerous prospect now that he's set up in Europe. He has created a school on the continent, in a monastery of all places, just to be really perverse. So he's not just interested in subverting the UK. No. This school has the expressed purpose of teaching populist leaders and how they should carry out their campaigns in various other countries. A school that has been run by an organisation set up by various key members of the Conservative Party in, in the UK. The tentacles of these people are now getting everywhere. They are coordinating amongst themselves, which is something they didn't really do before. And Bannon is an ideologue. He's on a mission. Farage isn't. He's just a small time crook. And I really hate drawing parallels with the rise of the Nazis in 1930s Germany because, you know, everyone does that on the internet with every situation. And the other thing is that the aims are not really the same either. Bannon may be a closer parallel, but most of the other involved parties in Brexit are not genocidal maniacs. They're just greedy people who are not satisfied with their own levels of wealth. But the methods they are employing are so similar that it's absolutely incredible. And when you don't learn the lessons of history, then history runs the risk of repeating itself. And it, it's like we didn't learn anything at all. At the very least, we have been too arrogant to believe that it could happen to us. That's the greatest threat we pose to ourselves, believing that we are somehow special or wiser and that these terrible events couldn't possibly happen to us in the here and now. Well, they can and they will if we continue to be blinkered in our approach. In fact, they are happening right now. And also people who, who don't think this could possibly end up in war. Uh, people are just complacent because we haven't had war in Western Europe for generations. The same generations that have seen the European community, which was set up specifically to prevent war. A hundred years ago, more than a hundred years ago now, we tried to avoid war in Western Europe. After a thousand years of almost constant war in Western Europe, we, we hit upon a great idea. It's like, right, we'll form two different alliances opposed to each other. That'll stop war. Unfortunately, the First World War sort of exposed the flaw in that one. So then after the Second World War, we had a much better idea. It was like, right, what we need to do is actually have closer alliance. 
align our trade, make sure that our trade is dependent upon cooperation with each other. Do you know what? It worked. And it didn't just bring peace to Europe, it brought prosperity. After a thousand years of war, we've now had the longest period of peace in Western Europe. And the two events are of course linked. And if the formation of the bloc created peace, then of course any dissolution of it risks that peace. It's obvious enough, surely. And we're allowing people like Farage to be the heralds of our own doom. And we're cheering them along as we do it. That's what's so disastrous. This goes way beyond Brexit as well. Brexit is just the tool they are using. They know that the Brexit they're advocating is impossible. That is the beauty of their strategy. It can never be achieved. But because those people are not in government, not enough people are actually stupid enough to elect them to parliament. So they never take the blame. You know, they blame someone else. You know, what they do is they, you know, if they were ever elected to government, then they'd have to take responsibility. But no, they get to say that the reason this fantasy version of Brexit they're peddling isn't happening is because the politicians aren't doing it. They're, they're defying the will of the people. I wish they did. I wish they'd have just called the whole thing off, but they haven't been. And, and that's why I also have to draw another parallel, because the Nazis stormed to power on a wave of populist fervour. But less than a decade later, they were reviled within their own country forevermore. Their very names became a curse. The same would absolutely happen with Farage and his crew. But devastation would be the price we paid to come out the other side. And, and they will keep doing this and, and, and keep doing it. And nothing will stop them before we end up in a very dark place. The only thing that can actually stop these people, that expose them and their lies, just like with the Nazis, sorry, another parallel, is to allow them the power to do what they say we should be doing. But of course, that is to invite disaster and I hope it never happens. And I'm increasingly afraid for what the next decade is going to bring if we don't actually wake up to these dangers. We don't have anyone exposing these people. We can't even rely on the media to expose these people. At the moment, we have the right individually to challenge the likes of Farage. But what happens when those rights are removed? We don't need to guess. We can see it in other wealthy nations now and in the past where those rights either were never very strong to begin with or were removed. Russia being a prime example now, but there's been other examples in the past. And we're doing it to ourselves with full access to the facts for those who wish to open their eyes to it. But anyway, that's what I've got to say on the Brexit party. Let me know what you think in the comments below, of course. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.